Hello everybody, Peggy here with another video. I am messing around today. Uh, it's a little too hot to take anything too seriously, so I thought I'd try a new design that I've been looking at on the internet. This is, I don't even know if this has a name, so I'm not even sure how to describe this before getting started, so um, bear with me on that. But yeah, I just decided to, uh, to try out a new design. I haven't made a uh, tarot mat in a while. For those of you who don't know, I make uh, tarot stuff, so, I make tarot stuff, I sell it in my Etsy shop. There's a link below if you care to check it out. Anyway, I am looking at a new design. I found this online, and online, the des this design that I found is generally speaking for like a 10 inch block when it's all done, and I'm gonna see if I can blow this up to a bigger block. I think when I get the first piece done, the first section done, I think you'll see where I'm going for it. So I'm just gonna get started. I've seen the design online um, and elsewhere, and I've been dying to try it. I don't know if it has a name. I, I cannot, I'm gonna have to look that up later. So for now, this is the unnamed magical design and we're gonna see what we think of it. Um, it's really simple, really easy. So anybody who's looking to make little tote bags or stuff and they want, I, okay, when you're making a tote bag, you need one piece of fabric, another piece of fabric, whatever lining you care to use or not use. They're not, small projects like that aren't difficult to make, but if you wanna make a little fancy piece thing, piece thing, thing piece. You know what I mean. If you want it to be, uh, if you want it to have a nice design in the front, then this might be something you want to consider. Otherwise, just relax and enjoy me babbling while I check this design out. Um, I think, I think it's going to go really, really well. I tried something similar on a smaller scale the other day, and I really loved how easy it was and how it worked out. So come along with me. We're going to do this. And then, like I said, you can check it out for yourself and maybe instead of just using a plain piece of fabric for your next uh, tote bag or small project, you're gonna wanna put together a nice little panel first and, and work with that. I'm gonna use this for a tarot mat if it turns out. And if it doesn't turn out, I'm still gonna use it for a tarot mat. I'm probably just gonna give it to my lovely, lovely wife instead of selling it. So we'll see how this turns out. Come along, let's see what's going Come along and let's see what happens. This is something I've been working on today. It is going to be a... Um, tarot mat. I make tarot products on my on my shop, for those of you who may not be aware. Anyway, this is going to be finished. It's 24 by 24 inches. I'm just giving you the rundown now because I don't know what this design is called. That's the punchline. I don't know what this design is called. So today I am making this for you guys. I worked out all the kinks. Um, I've done, I've done a similar design. I've done, I've done, I've pretty much done this before on a smaller scale. I wanted to see what this looks, looks, looks like. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm so excited and now I'm stuttering. I wanted to see what this looks like on a larger scale because I really wanted to make a tarot mat out of it. And then I realized while I was cutting all my fabric that I have enough for two. Um, the way that I cut my fabric and stuff makes it possible for me to do two at a time. And since I sell these in my shop on Etsy, it makes perfect sense to make two at a time. So what do we have going on here? So I've got that one that I just made. Now I have to make the other one. And this is pretty simple. So let me just bring this back out so I can explain what's happening. I don't need to explain too much. I'm just going to, I'm just basically going to be showing you. So you're going to need four pieces of fabric. One, two, three, four, four squares. Four squares, and depending on what size you start with, that's gonna determine what your finished piece is. This starts with a nine and a half inch square in the center and finishes out, at, I, haven't, I haven't double checked this yet, I just finished it, got excited, turned the camera on. This finishes out at 22 by 22. 22 inches by 22 inches, 22 inches is, let me see what that is in a metric. This is how I, this is how I do my metric conversion, it's like boop, 56 centimeters, anyway. Let's get started. Let us get started. This is pretty simple. So you're going to take this piece of fabric. Now this has four. So it's going to, you'll see, you'll see where this is going when it's done. But the way this works is you take two pieces of fabric, pin them so they won't shift. Lots of pinning in this. I, I, I did that one there. Now, I still love the way it turned out, but there was a couple times I had to stop, take out stitches, start over. Um, but at least I stopped, took out the stitches, and started over because I didn't want to uh, screw things up. So that one's, that one's um, done. I just have to 
put the batting and the backing on it. Now, if you guys are not, see sometimes when you're putting this stuff together, things shift. So this is why the pins. I see a lot of people putting their pins in from the outside to the inside. I never got the hang of it. Let's see if I can actually make that work. Cause sometimes what happens is your things will shift, will whatever. You cut them, you cut, you cut two pieces of fabric to the same size and then when you go to put them together you realize that they're not quite exact, which is fine. I don't mind going over it more than once. This is, uh, this is part of the reason why these are kind of pricey when I get them finished. What happened here? There's no pin. Where's my pin? I didn't put it in yet. That's why. Oh my. Okay. I'm just excited. I'm just excited. This is fun. But we're going, I'm going to put, I'm going to put a quarter of an inch seam all the way around. If you want a heavier, this, this is um, pretty versatile. If you, if you are comfortable with a wider seam, you can put a wider seam all the way around. Just remember that whatever seam you put on this side has to be the same here, here, and here. So go all, so sew all the way around. Come on over to the machine with me. We'll get started in just a second. So for this one, I am going to switch over to my walking foot. Walking foot is this guy. So different machines have different walking feet. I think you're going to hear that a lot from me about the different machines have different everything. Where's my screwdriver? Be right back. Okay. After an exhaustive search, I finally found my screwdriver. Who found your screwdriver? Lisa found my screwdriver. <laughs> Lisa found my screwdriver. I was going to sit here and let... She's over there killing herself laughing at me. I can't believe you tried to take credit with me in the room. It was a collective eye. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. I am very sorry. As you were. That I put my wife in a situation. Okay, apparently I can't deal with using a screw. What the heck's going on here? Oh, it's got the bigger one on. Okay. So these are little, this, this does not come with the machine. This does not, this is, this is literally a little utility screwdriver, like the kind you get um, from the drug, at the, at, the, at the little checkout at the drugstore. This is the kind of stuff that comes with the machine. There's one of these. There's the, there's the one that comes with the machine. This is the screwdriver. This weird little freaking thing is the screwdriver that comes with this machine, and I hate it. I hate it because it's a pain in the ass. You're in here with two hands. It's, 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 it's dumb. <laughs> I don't, okay, it's a personal choice, but I don't like it. Anyway, for this particular design pattern, come on, I'm having the worst day today. There we go. So I am changing the... These are all... I know I, I said I, I'm moving the camera so you guys can see and then immediately put my hands in the way. These are the types of screws that you, once you get them loosened off, you can move, you can put them on and take them off just by hand. So you got that going for you. Make sure you put that somewhere where you're not going to lose it. Give me four seconds. I'm probably going to knock it. So just lift that. Comes right out. I've got a needle and I, in theory, in theory, the needle is not supposed to be on the machine. You should take the needle off when you're putting your walking foot on unless well you should take yeah don't do what i'm doing take your needle out before you put your walking foot on so walking foot is pretty simple this piece here there's a little bar that's not even on the camera right now there's a little bar let's see if i can find it there it is there's a little bar right there that the needle connects into this little bar is going to go above that like that so a little fiddling will ensue. Fiddling will ensue. This is normal. Normal that fiddling will ensue. So what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to hold this. You're going to shove your arm through the hole here. You're going to hold this with that up. It is, it looks complicated. You don't have to use a lot. Of, you don't have to use any force. It's just fiddly. So if you decide to get or try, or if you break out your walking foot, so that's it. It's on. It's on. It's in place. These two little hooks go right here. Now I always put my, I always put the, I always put the shank. This is the shank. I always put that up while I get everything in place to give me more room to work. And then I drop it. I drop the shank down. The hole that I unscrewed this from, I'm going to get my big fat hand in here. You're not going to be able to see anything for a second. Let's do this. This is magnetic. This is a magnetic screwdriver, which is why I like it. I'm going to get in here just a little bit. 
I'm going to get in here and not get anything going the way I want it to. Let's see what I can do here. So again, it's fiddly. These are not, I'm not using any pressure. I'm just fighting with it a little bit because these were designed by people who don't sew, I think. Anyway, let's get this. There we go. So sometimes, I mean, on this machine, this is not the most fun time that you're gonna have, but I will say, once it's on, you're gonna be glad you have it. And I'm probably, there we go. This is a pain in the ass. It's always going to be a pain in the ass. It's never going to stop being a pain in the ass. Come on, stop fighting with you, you stupid thing. The unfortunate part is that when you're putting this stuff on, you, when you're putting this stuff on, you're quickly going to discover that other machines are easier to work with. And I may not even save this piece of video because it's a pain in the ass. Jesus, fuck, this thing hates me. I'm keeping that in. Okay. Oh yeah, love sewing. Remind yourself just how much you love sewing while you're putting on your uh, ever so exciting walking foot. I'll tell you right now, if you got somebody in the house that's got good hand-eye coordination, this can become their job. I have terrible hand-eye coordination. Yeah, well. Just yeah, I'm just, it is not cooperating. And this is the good one too. I've got two. I've got two different walking feet for this machine. And this is. This is. Once this is on, this is the better. There we go. Look! 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 Oh my God! Look! Look! No problem. No must. No fuss. What I find is, <laughs> no problem. No must. No fuss. It only took me four hours. Okay. So what I find is that the clip, the the, the clip bit sections and the shank very rarely meet up perfectly. I always find that I have to ever so slightly lift the shank up and down. Just think of it like putting together Ikea furniture. It is so frustrating to get these things on sometimes. Um, on my other machine, it's a, on my Janome, it's a much easier process because the walking foot was made. And again, you guys aren't going to see much, but I'm just screwing in this screw now. Okay. With, with your walking foot, it's so, it's such a, this is all blocking. It's really um, an annoying it's really annoying to get your fingers in there. So you can normally finger tighten this, but because of the way you walk, because of the way the um, walking foot goes on. Now, once you get once you get tight, you are not cranking this. Just go. Oh, that's tight. Okay, little tiny bit, tiny bit of pressure. That's it. It's on. Aren't we happy? This is so much fun. Okay, so I did this earlier on the other one, the one I was just getting super excited about. And the one thing I was having a problem with was that as I was, as I was sewing, as I was sewing, things kept shifting because when you're sewing with a regular foot, the foot drags along the top and there's a couple of points at which you are cutting across the bias. And if I have a piece of, I have a piece of scrap, I'll cut a piece of scrap for you in a minute and show you what I mean. But right now I'm just going to go around and I'm going to put a quarter inch seam all the way around on this monster. Oh, we're ready to start. Sometimes the thrill of sewing, sometimes the frustration of sewing has very, very little to do with the actual sewing and everything to do with all the shit you need. So what's going on is as this goes down, this piece goes down, as the needle goes down, you guys can't even see it. And I'm really sorry that I'm not getting a very good uh, angle for you because it's not... Um, let's see if I can get this in here. Okay. So as this piece here, this piece here is the piece that I wiggled and jiggled and got over the shank. As I do a stitch, and I'm only going to do one or two so because I'm sitting way back here. Come on. As I do a stitch, as this piece comes up, it lifts that up. When it lifts that up, it lifts the feet up. When it lifts the feet up, it lets everything move forward at once. See how this top, see how this is lifting? So that means that it's not going to drag across your thread, this across your fabric. This can be really important. 
So I'm gonna explain this to you because I love explaining things to people. I really do actually, I don't know why I like that. Anyway, so if you've got a piece of fabric, this is scrap, by the way, this is scrap so I can uh, not be too agonizing about it. Okay, so when you've got a piece of fabric, it pulls this way. See how it pulls, it pulls a little, pulls this way. It pulls this way. When you cut your fabric on an angle, which I'm gonna do right now, it pulls that way. It pulls, it's, it's hard to tell because it's such a small piece, but it pulls way more, way easier. So I did my first one without using um, a walking foot and it's doable and it's fine. There it is, it's doable, it's fine. Um, I'll have a much easier time with the walking foot because when I get to the areas where I'm sewing into the bias, it's not gonna shift around as much. Some slight shifting is happening, not a big deal. Um, you never, once you, if you cut two pieces of fabric separately, they're just never gonna quite line up perfectly. Okay, and one more stitch. Get it, get it back around that corner again. Cut it, do, 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 we're good. So yeah, walking foot is easy. Walking foot is very good at doing most of the work for you. If you have a problem, some people like tend to pull their thread, tend to pull or pull. If you, have, if you find that you have that as an issue, then a walking foot can do that. A walking foot though can only do straight stitching. It can't really do anything else, so that matters. But beyond that, I actually really like my walk. I, I, li I love my walking foot. Once it's on, I'll usually wait until I've got like, I'll usually wait until I've got five, six, seven projects on the go, or I do have more than one machine. So I will um, set up one machine with the walking foot and then do all, all these projects on it. Now that walking foot's on this machine, I'll probably keep it on for a week or more. Okay, next step. Next step, next step, next step. Where's my pen? I lost my pen again, honey. There it is. So next step is easy. There's your show easy that I'm gonna, this is so easy that it took me an hour and a half to do the first one because I wanted to stop and double check it every step. I've done this before a little bit. I've done this before a little teeny tiny bit, but I mean, obviously I wanna make sure I'm doing this right because I wanna put one, I wanna put at least one of these in the shop. Now what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna give away the other one. So what we're gonna do, Ooh, I forgot to tell you guys that, huh? If you guys are if you guys are still listening to my babbling and putting up with me, you get to enter a giveaway. Okay, so I am going corner to corner, but I am not going to this corner. I'm going to the corner that is created by the thread just onto the inside. Because every now and again, something doesn't line up right and you end up a little off in your lines. And this is already gonna be a an imperfect thing to begin with. You'll see what I mean, but... So we're gonna go all the way across on both sides. Make sure it's a line that you can follow because this part is gonna matter. This, I don't know if this has a name or not, by the way, I don't know if this, the, the reason why I'm just kind of babbling and getting right to it is because I have no idea if this design even has a name. I've seen it, I've done it a couple times myself for other projects, I've seen it online, but I cannot for the life of me remember what it's called. Anyway, so you're gonna take your, this, I, I'm pretty sure we've all done this in school but you're gonna take the line, you're gonna fold it, you're gonna make sure the lines line up so that you're cutting nice and straight. You're gonna make a little snip. That's it, little snip. Make sure you don't cut the back, of course. If you have decided on which fabric is front or back, like obviously I don't wanna cut across this because it's got a nice design on it. If you don't care, then just start cutting away. Find out where your little hole went, there it is and try your best to make a nice straight line. You can take your time, no problem there. Go right up to the corner, don't cut it, flip it around. So you're just, you're just cutting along the line, take your time. I'm gonna finish this up. A good pair of scissors that can cut all the way to the tip is helpful. Um, if you can't cut all the way to the tip, 
if you can't cut all the way to the tip, you'll see what I mean, but if you can't cut it all the way to the tip, then just make sure that when you fold this out, that you fold them consistently so that they're all folding back to the same amount. I'll kind of, I'll, I'll hopefully try and show you this in a second. Ooh, something's beeping. Okay, so once you've cut these, I've, I'll cut the rest in a second. Once you've cut these, you're gonna fold it out like this. If for some reason you can't get your scissors to go all the way into the corner, just be very careful to make sure that you're folding it out by the same amount. You'll be able to, you'll be able to work with this. Don't worry about that. Okay. La 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 la. La 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 la. Okay, so I made a big deal about the bias. And what has just happened here, I showed you that little thing about the stretching. I showed you that thing about the stretching. Well, what's going on now is these were all, oh wait, this was on the bias, so it was super stretchy. This was not on the bias, so it wasn't super stretchy. This is now on the bias. This is now on the bias. So this, every, every one of these pieces is gonna be stretchy along the outside edge. This is where I, this is what I learned when I did the other one. Now, we're gonna, I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna disappear over to the uh, machine, over to the ironing board for a minute. Because you have to iron after every step. If you'd hate ironing, this may not be the project for you. Okay, okay, so the ironing has been accomplished. The unfortunate byproduct of this project is that you must learn to love ironing. You have no choice, it is a rule, it is not a rule. Okay. Next piece, so the, that was a nine and a half inch piece, that was a nine and a half inch piece, that has now folded out and blossomed into a 12 and a half inch piece, total, from here to here. So this is now, so, so I started off with two nine and a half inch squares, I now have one, oh, it's a little off, oh no, it's 12 and a half, so tw I one 12 and a half inch square. Now, I'm gonna put all my junk over here out of the way, I am going to put the next piece on, and don't forget, this is all bias and is stretchy. This is the reason why I opted for the um, walking foot, because this is so stretchy that if you're sewing over it and um, your foot is dragging even a little bit, it's going to pull everything completely out of whack. It's You have to pin. That's the punchline. You have to use lots and lots of pins so carefully. Um, if you don't have a walking foot, this is still a very, very doable project. So, come on, why is this going on? Oh, right, you're scissor cutting everything. So when you're done, you're not necessarily gonna get perfection for the next set, next piece. That's fine. What you're, what you're gonna wanna do is go along. You may even want, you may even wanna measure and put in a line. If you're, okay, like, so if you're looking at this and you're going, oh, but you know what, once you get, as, as you do each piece, it kind of goes a little, a little wonky, a little wonky. That's normal. This is part of how this, this is something that I've seen. I actually checked out a bunch of videos. It's like, am I doing this right? So I checked out a bunch of videos and I've seen this in every single one of them. This gets a little wonky as you go and you can stop and call it, people just call it squaring it off. So if you are doing a perfection project, then you can come back and do that. If you are doing a, well, this needs to be nice, but then you can just come back, pin it all together. Let's do that first. I'm just gonna put a couple of pins in for now. I'll pin it, I'll pin the rest of it in a minute. What you can do is you can go, okay, I want, I want to take a look at that corner. I want, I'm going to, I'm going to be doing a, I'm going to be doing a quarter inch. I want it to be this. And you can literally just put a straight line through here. Mark it. Don't be afraid to do that. Especially if you're using heat erase. Um, you can use chalk, chalk pencil. Mark, mark where you want to put your next line. If this, if you feel like, again, I've cut this with scissors. This is not going to be a perfect, uh, the, you, you have to cut these with scissors. They're not going to be perfectly straight cuts. So in order to deal with that, you can either square it up, and again, cut it, measure it, make sure it's even. You can square it up. You can um, do that if you've got more experience. Of, if you've got more experience, of course, you can go, okay, and just eyeball it and not have to mark it at all. But don't be afraid to do any of those things to get it exactly how you want it. And if you're not concerned, I'm, I'm not concerned because 
I'm going to start, I'm going to start in the corner. I'm going to do my quarter inch. I'm going to keep an eye on things. That's how they go. Um, and I'm going to put my ruler down and make sure that this is reasonable. Reasonable is fine. I mean, when it's done, yeah, so you know, this one here, this one here isn't necessarily reasonable along the bottom. So I put a single pin in, I put a single pin in the bottom. I'm going to square this off. After all my mouth and off, I'm going to square it off. How does that sound? So I want to check where the, I want to check where these um, squares are, nine and a half, I mean 12 and a half. I want to go from seam to seam. That's square. I'm satisfied that that is square. Now I'm going to use this straight line. I'm just over explaining the shit out of this, but I think you guys know where I'm going here. So that is, I am, I am not measuring from this point. I am measuring from the, from the fabric, from where the um, thread goes. I'm measuring from there because I'm going to get a more accurate measurement. And I'm going to have a much easier time straightening things up. Now, I've seen plenty of, plenty of these videos where they don't bother with this step. They just eyeball it. They take their best guess. They, they eyeball it. They take their best guess. They get on with their day. And these things still turn out beautifully. You do not have to make your life miserable in order to make this absolutely perfect. I, I plan on selling, I'm, I'm, if I've done this one correctly, then, okay, if I haven't done it correctly, then life goes on, but I'm hoping to sell it. So with that in mind, I really wanna make sure that I've squared everything up. Again, I did the pin. You can actually fold and fold and find your center points. If you, okay, if you don't have the big fancy ruler, you can find your center point by just folding it See, corner to corner and then mark and then putting in a finger press to make a mini seam and then doing it with that way. So after squaring this up and making sure that this is exactly where I want it to be, it's now about 12 and a quarter inches all the way around. So I've lost about an eighth of an inch total overall. Just so you guys know where I'm at. We're still doing well. I'm going to finish pinning this up. So again, this is on what's called the bias, which is way more stretchy. Requires way more care. Again, that's, for, that's why I'm using the walking foot. If you are not using a walking foot, put in extra pins. Put in extra pins so that you don't have to worry about things shifting and take your time. I get to be a tiny bit lazier with the pins because the walking foot is going to Whoop. it's going to go, the bottom things are going to go, it's going to, they're both going to let go at the same time, move forward at the same time, like that. That's how a walking foot works on the top in, in conjunction with the feet on the bottom. Okay. Uh, the corner. Get over there. I don't need to rush and I don't need to hurry. Sometimes the most beautiful projects take insane amounts of prep and very little actual sewing. Anyway, so this is pinned. I'm not going to start exactly at the corner because I don't have to. And I kind of like going to the corner and then turning. I don't know why. I, starting in a corner just, just seems to annoy me for some reason. So this is bias. Try not to stretch it. If you're working on smaller pieces, it's easier to stay, it's easier to stay in control on that. I've seen some of these ones where they're starting off with a, with a center piece of like two inches. Anyway, let the, let the walking foot do the work. All you're doing is guiding it. We are going to cut the next one. Same, whoops, we're going to get that pin out of there. 
same process all over again. Now I have a, where'd I go? There he is. I have a bigger ruler, so I'm going to use it. Flip it over. Go from, go from the stitch corner to the stitch corner. Again, these are friction markers, so they are going to just, they erase, I, I, I do this, I go over, I iron it, the, the mark is gone. Oh, I mentioned a contest. I got myself distracted. Okay, so in the description, you're gonna find an you're gonna find a link to an email address. This is not a mailing list. I'm going to choose a winner and then I'm gonna delete the list. So I'm not keeping any of this stuff. We just can't think of any other um, reasonable way to do a to do a uh, contest because I don't. Currently, currently I have no plans for doing any lives or anything, and the usual picker tools that you use for that don't work very well unless you are doing it live. So I'm going to have to do it a different way. I'm pulling my chair in, and I think I just stuck my whole face in there. Okay, next one. So we are going to be doing the giveaway, and I'm giving away one of these. So... They both, they are both shop quality. They are both really nice. I, unless I do something really, really horrible in the next 15 minutes, these are, one of these I'm gonna put in the shop. The other one I'm gonna do a giveaway. What I'm gonna do is have a link in the shop to, to get your name and your email address. And then I will pick a winner. I will announce the winner. I will announce the winner on I will come back and edit the description below this to announce the winner as well as contact the winner by the email through the email address that they will provide. I will um, two weeks from now. Whoop, I went off center. That's fine. I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing slightly wider seams because I'm doing the walking foot, but don't forget, you have plenty of opportunity to square this up. And because you're cutting with scissors, do not expect perfect lines to begin with. That's kind of the whole fun of it, I guess. Don't expect perfect lines, just uh, try and keep them consistently imperfect. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna do a giveaway. This is gonna be a fully finished tarot mat. I have no idea yet what I'm gonna back it on. I haven't got that far. I'm just working with the front first to see what I think of the design. It is going to be, um, I've done, I did a tarot mat already on the channel. Uh, if you go back, maybe I'll link that below too to see how to finish one, how I finish these. And um, so once I finish it, I will announce the winner. I will probably take, I will um, post the video, probably two weeks after I post the video, I'll announce the winner. So just make sure you click the link and uh, click the link that you'll find below and then from there, enter the contest. I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna do some, say something at the end of the video as well, just to make sure that uh, anybody who wants to enter doesn't forget to go click. Oh, there's no, the link will already be there. I'm just not. I'm, this is my very first. Per, this, I've done giveaways on. I've, 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 I've um instigated and facilitated giveaways on my wife's channel, but this is my first giveaway all on my own for my own little channel here. Ironing time. Be right back. Okay. Okay, last one. If I sound, uh, it's like, I don't know what time it is here. I think it's like 11 o'clock. I'm just, I'm, I've been on a, I've been on a roll all day, so I've been getting a lot of stuff done. Okay, so this, now, remember I had to trim up on the last step, so this one is a little, that one's a little bit bigger now, but the good news is, oh, I gotta be right back. Give me two seconds, zip, zip, I am back. Okay, so I will say that if you are doing this with a two inch, a four inch, whatever it goes up to, if you're, if you're doing this, if you are doing this on a small enough scale so that this, is your finished size. 
you probably don't have to iron at every single step. Um, because I'm doing this on a larger scale, the um, mistake, you know, like, like if I have a little wobble in my cutting, it's much more noticeable. That's why I'm ironing at every step. If you want to try this with a, and start with a two inch block and go up from there, you will probably be a lot more successful and you'll probably have to do, a, you'll probably actually have to do a little less fiddling because it'll be really, it'll be easier, easier to eyeball your lines, see where things are at. I am not going to trim this one, but I am going to mark it, I think. I want to see, the, I want to see the difference because I'm going to come back and trim it anyway. So if that is my, oh, there we go. There's a straight line right there. Yeah, I'll want to trim this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna, I'm gonna wanna um, shift this and make sure that it's. How, how off is that? Oh yeah, okay. Okay, that's actually that. Yeah, that actually did shift. It shifted more than I thought it was gonna, but that's okay. Again, I'm working on a bigger scale. This is just making noise now. I'm working on a bigger scale, so it's not gonna matter the same way. So that's one, two, three and a quarter. One, two and a half. This is a half piece there. So one, two, three and a quarter. Yeah. One, two, three and a quarter. Okay. That's not right. Let's flip my ruler. Let's flip my ruler. Apparently I can't count to three and a half. One, two, three and a half. There it is. See, it was a lot further out than I thought it was. Yeah. This one will be just fine. Okay. I'm just going to mark my fabric because I'm, I'm, it's late. I don't want to keep the wife up. She's trying to go to sleep. Now, turn my ruler the right way. I love having the fancy rulers. They're really helpful. One, two and a half. Nope. Three and a half. One, two, three and a half. I'm lining up on the um, seam that's in the center because I already know that's square. So that's got to go right there a tiny bit. This is, every video I've seen, some of this is happening. I'm pretty sure that this is more noticeable because I'm working with much larger pieces than, um, than most of those videos are showing. Oh, let's get that down there. Yeah, I thought it shifted. Okay, there we go. Now what I'm going to do though, I'm marking, what I'm marking is where I would put the edge of the fabric if I was trimming. And then when I sew, I'm going to sew in a quarter of an inch from the lines that I'm making now. So, one, two, three. There we go. Oh, that one's not where I want it. There we go. So I'm going to make, I'm going to be, uh, some of these... I'm being generous with this because it's okay. It's okay if these are not, you can't, it is, the, this particular design does not let you have points. I don't know if you know what points are. I'm assuming a lot of you do. Because of the, because of the way this particular block is done, these corners are always cut off. So if one is cut off a tiny bit more than the others, it doesn't, it actually adds to the effect instead of taking away from it. So let's turn, I'm going to trim this too. I just wanted to like, A, A, I wasn't, uh, I didn't want to cut first. And I wanted to double, sometimes it's, sometimes it is worth it to do it this way. And this particular time I feel like it's worth it. So off we go. This one's a lot bigger, so more pins. Sometimes I really find it to be helpful. I mean, and I mean really helpful to, um, oh, pardon me. I, sometimes I find it to be really, really helpful to make lines to sew along versus tr cutting and then sewing along um, edges of fabric like that. I don't know how to describe it. Like the first, the, the first one I did, with the, the, the last one I did, I cut and then I sewed. This one, I'm going to sew and then cut because sometimes when you have larger f pieces of fabric like this, I feel like the fabric, you have more control. I'm gonna put a pin in the center just in case something shifts, just in, just in case. Sometimes I feel like you have more control if you are sewing along a line 
because I'll have fabric on both sides, which I'll have fabric on both sides, which means that my feet will be touching on both sides. If you're sewing on an edge, sometimes one, of, sometimes one edge of the foot isn't touching properly, so which means your machine isn't, which means your fabric isn't being pulled through the machine evenly. It does, but it doesn't. I don't know how to describe it, but sometimes if things are, if you put a piece of, fa if you fold a piece of fabric in half, if you fold a piece of fabric in half, put that under your, put that on the, on the edge as if you're, and then, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to describe it. But if you take a look at how your machine, how the foot comes down over top of your fabric, sometimes you'll get a better result if you mark the line, sew it, and then trim to the line. And I'm pretty sure I'll get a much better result off of this last one because I'm sewing on bias again, right? Um, that's bias again. It's really, really stretchy. I'm not entirely sure. I'm wondering if maybe I should have done the whole thing this way and instead of cutting to size, if I should have cut an extra inch, marked it and then ironed it. I mean, marked it and then trimmed it. I'm gonna try that with the next one. I'm probably gonna do two or three. Not, I'm, I may not, I'm not gonna do this exact same design again, but if I, I really like how this is turning out. So I might pick out some other um, fabrics and uh, do a couple of more of these. Or maybe even just do a small one in the center and then just put a, a solid all the way around it. I don't know. Check in the comments. Give me, let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think. You think I should do, you think I should find some more pieces like this and do the big around it? Or should I do this on a smaller scale and then just have a nice border all the way around? I mean, there's, everybody has their own taste. So I'm like, oh, I think this is cool, but Maybe people think, maybe people have another idea of how I can incorporate this design, this, this style into a, um, into an existing, into another cloth. Anyway, so I'm not sewing directly along the lines because I'm, uh, in this case, I'm not going to sew directly along the lines because I, I made my lines, um, in order to avoid having to trim. So I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the, um, right side of my foot along the line. So my sew line is probably actually going to be a quarter of an inch. My sew line will be about a quarter of an inch into here. And then when I'm done, I'll just cut that line. So uh, let's turn the camera and see what happens now. Yeah, sewing is funny. Sewing is really funny because everybody has their process, their system, their way of doing it. So yeah, so, oh, this is nice. This, this, okay, okay. This is a weird thing. I don't know if I'm the only, I can't be the only sewer that does this. What I'm gonna do is I just realized that this hole, this has a hole in it. So I'm gonna line up this line that I made with that hole. This foot is still gonna grab it. The feed dogs underneath are still gonna grab it properly, but I'm gonna line up that foot with that hole because obviously I want this line to be consistent. And if you don't line, if you don't line up with something, around or on your foot, you're gonna just go, well, you know, where was it again? So I'm gonna line that black. I'm gonna target so that that black line goes right, passes right under that hole. I can see it. I'm not gonna backstitch because I'm coming all the way around. Yeah, this is working out really well. So I'm getting a nice straight line. I'm going to avoid putting you through the pain of watching me cut with scissors one more time. I'm going to trim this out and iron it up and I'll be right back and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. There it is. There it is. It is done. It is done. Okay. It's not done. It's just the top is done. I got to put the whole thing together. I'm not doing that tonight. I am not doing that tonight. It is late. <laughs> it's already late. So. It's already late, so what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna trim this. Remember what I said, if you're gonna store it, leave it as is so that when you come back and get it ready for sewing, you're not gonna have to deal with frays. So I've got two of these. I do believe my first one came out a little bit smaller. I think I was a little bit more careful on the uh, trimming, let's see. Nope, this one's actually a little bit bigger. So we have two of these guys, we have one, the only difference, the only difference is that this guy's facing that way, that guy, this one's facing that way. They're facing in opposite directions to each other. 
So we'll do that. So if you happen to be the winner of the giveaway, and I'll, if you happen to be the winner of the giveaway and you have a preference for direction, and I will, I will hopefully be in a position to give you a choice. Anyway, these are done. I'm going to store them for now, for a day or two. I'm not, uh, I got to get the batting. I got to, I got to cut up the batting. I got to get the, uh, I have to figure out what backing I'm going to use. Probably just a, uh, probably just a solid color. I usually, when I, I usually do my backings in, I usually do my backings in solid colors so that you can have this busy, busy front. And then when you're ready to, because people buy these, well, you can use these for anything. You can use these. I call them tarot mats, table mats. You can use them as an outdoor tablecloth because they won't blow away. Um, you can use them as an indoor tablecloth because they're absorbent, just like a you know coaster. You can use a, you can even use them as a place setting, maybe as a maybe as a uh, something to put your centerpiece on. Anyway, they're not they're not strictly for tarot, and if that's if tarot is not your thing, there are dozens of other uses for a cloth this size, um, especially if you have an accent table, like I said, an accent table, an outdoor table. Um, you could even, you could even just like some back in the day, remember when they used to put do doilies over couches and stuff like that? You could even use it for something like that. But anyway, this is it. This is, this is, this is the large scale version of this. I didn't get a lot of measurements for you guys. So this was not, this was two nine and a half inch pieces, nine and a half, nine and a half. Sew them together, cut through the center, open it up. Then the next one was, get the right measurement. The next one was 16 by 16. Yeah, 16 by 16. Sew them together, cut them across the center, open it up. The last one was 22 and a half by 22 and a half. Sew them together, crisscross, open them up. So that's how you do it on the large scale. I know there's small, there's tons of stuff for the smaller scale. I wanted to see what the large scale looked like. I'm really happy with it. I mean, I'm really happy with this. Um, so again, uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I'm just going to keep saying giveaway, 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 give it away. I'm giving it away. Um, so go down to the, uh, go down to, you know, like, subscribe, share, ring the bell, do all the things because that helps. It. That's the best way to help the channel. The best way to help the channel is to just, uh, subscribe, hit the thumbs up. Even if you don't subscribe, just clicking that like will, will, will help. Anyway, anyway, shameless plug over. I will send this anywhere, any country, any continent. I have no problem with that. So the winner gets this, and I will be sending this at, at no, this, this is, this, ah, it is getting late. I can tell I'm babbling now. I don't mind. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. I think that's one of those things. I mean, we all use different words to mean different things. I guess when a lot of people say you're babbling, they, they mean it in a negative way. I'm just like, yeah, I'm a little sleepy. It's fine. But anyway, anyway, doing a giveaway. One of these is to get one of these. Once I have these finished, one of them will be, one of them will be going into the shop. One will be for a giveaway. I'll announce two weeks after the uh, date the video is posted and uh, just Click the link below, click the contest link below. It'll take you to a page where you just give your name and your email address, that's it. And I will select the winner from that list. Um, we, have a, um, uh, we have a little thing, we just uh, copy and paste the names into it, and then a, uh, it just, just click a button and it does it all for us. I don't know, Lisa does it. Lisa will do it, she does con she does, she's done these kind of giveaways before. So yeah, go ahead and enter. Tell your family, tell your friends. Okay, I am back. It's been two days. I just finally got around to finishing this. I just had other stuff to do, so I didn't really get to it much. So this guy is done, ready to go. It is fully quilted. I did the stitch in the ditch all the way around, so the front doesn't really have stitch lines in it, but when you go to the back... Is the camera picking that up? I can see it really easily. I don't know if you can see it on the cameras, but there's a nice little design on the back. The, the design on the back just... The design in the back just follows these, so you can do whatever you want on the front. If you're using it for tarot um, and have stuff that you want to take pictures of, you can always do it from the back. It's a really nice green. I think the camera's picking that up well. Uh, so yeah, the bottom one's the same. Same one on the bottom. They're both the same. One's a little bit bigger. Um, not sure which one. I'm going to let Lisa pick one. which one's going to be the... Uh, ah, I'm going to let Lisa pick, pick which one is going to be for the giveaway. 
Okay, so these are, this, was a, this was a lot of fun to make. I really enjoyed making this design. Um, first one took an hour and a half because it was because I'd never tried it on this scale before. I'd never tried to do anything this big. It's actually really doable. Um, I think anybody who's tried this design before or who has liked it and wanted to do something with it, I think you'll have an e I think you'll have a pretty easy time doing it. Just make sure you stop, put these two together like you saw, and then stop and just make sure that they're in dimension where you want them to be. Put the next one on, stop. Once you get to this scale, once you get to this scale, those being off a little tiny bit really starts to matter and really starts to show up. Uh, this one is a little smaller because um, that this was the first one I did and it's a little smaller because I had to be, no regrets, it still looks gorgeous, but yeah, um, just, I realized that I wasn't being careful enough on my cuts, so when I did the second one, I was able to make it a little bit bigger because I didn't have to, uh, to cut off as much to square up. But either way, these are both really nice. They both turned, really, turned out really well. And, oh, and just so you know, this this one was the problematic one, and it's only like an inch, uh, about an inch and a half to two inches smaller. And I think, yeah, this one's, a little, this one's definitely smaller, but... When you, when you center it, it's only about an inch smaller all the way around. So I only lost an inch to um, the learning curve, if you know what I mean. So I think this is a very doable, easy, and it was easy. It was easy. Like I said, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't hard because it didn't take me an hour and a half because it was hard. It took me an hour and a half because I wanted to sell it and I wanted to make sure I wasn't screwing it up as I went along. Uh, and again, the second one went a lot faster went a lot easier. I was more aware of where I needed to make my cuts, so it was a lot less issues. Um, yeah, so let me get my finish. Let me let me let me get my little ruler. Where is my where is my little ruler? Oh, you get to see the pink one today. So the little one finishes at 21 inches. The big one finishes at oh, the big one finishes at 22 and a half. I didn't lose that much. So yeah. Make sure you uh, check out below, click on the link to give us uh, your name and your email address. Use a junk email address if you want. Just make sure it's an address that you check regularly. In two weeks from the time this video comes up, I will um, pick a winner and the winner will be notified. So um, make, sure that you're, make sure that you're checking your spam folder. And again, don't give me any other information, just your name and your email address. That's all I need. And then if you win, I will contact you. We will go from there. If you don't win, better luck next time. I plan on doing giveaways on this. I mean, I, I like having an excuse to do other projects so, and to do lots of stuff. So I'll be, do, I'll be doing other stuff. I'll be doing other giveaways. So make sure you like, subscribe, click the bell, do all the things so that you can uh, be notified when I have another video up. And in the meantime, you guys have a great day. Good luck on the draw. And I will be back soon. Bye.